welcome to my house. I'm Fuzzy Buckle, and you're frisking with Uncle Buck. In this episode, we're going to do two videos. We're going to cover the missions out in uh, Alberta, Canada. We're out to the White Moose Lake, level 22. And if you go there with level 22 gear, you can complete the missions. I did it. I just got back there. However, if you want to stay there like we need to, after we complete these missions and make money, don't lose any money, you do not want to be on this lake going after these trout with the gear that we've been using up till now. I went out there with, uh, you know, the stuff that we've been taking with us all along. You know, the ultra, my ultralight, I, I took the, the Nero out there, level 15 pole. The ultralight was a level 12 pole. Uh, I took the Thoro, my Thoro out there, that's a level 22 pole. Um, took the all around, that's a level 16 pole. I was able to complete all the missions. However, the, it, it took me forever. You can't make any money with those poles. So I would recommend, I mean, even though this is level 22, do not even attempt to go over there and make any money unless you've got at a minimum level 24 gear or higher. So we're going to take different gear this time for this mission. Uh, <clears throat> I, I don't want to beat up everything again. I want to make some money this time. But I, I got out of there okay. We still came out in, in black. So we were good. Alright. So with that being said, we got four missions to get done over there. Uh, two of them will go ahead and that'll be just the two videos we do. Mission, uh, it's the exploration and then the uh, white moose trial. And we'll get that done. And of course the last two missions are you got to snag up some shells while you're there to get to the voodoo bait and then get the voodoo. I already caught this guy so I can't, I can't make a video on him. Um, but you need definitely if you're going after the Buddha guy, once you get your shells, I mean, that fish averages from 39 to 44 pounds. So that's 20 pounds. That's level 24 gear or better uh, to even go get this guy. So with that being said, let's jump over here to our inventory and see what we're going to take this time. Because I, I changed things up a little bit. Now, um, in the first position here, I'm going to take the Loki. All right, we got Loki with a Hermit Swarm on there, and that's a 24-pound stuff, and I'm running 25, 25-pound 25 um, test on that guy. Now that's a level 31 pole, and that's a level 34 reel. Now recovery on that guy is real nice on that on that reel. That's a 35 and a half inch recovery, so that's pretty good. And for you guys who are just starting, you may not know what that recovery means. That one crank of the one crank of the reel retrieves your lure 35 and a half inches now your bass casting rods they have a very short recovery it's tough to fight fish on there if you want to get them in quick so you don't want to be with it using a bass rod if you're out farming it just <laughs> those casting rods just don't get it all right so then we're going to take our jig winner here this jig winner eight footer here he's he's a 13 pound guy and, we, and what we got on him is the Bremer 5000. Now that's a 38.5 retrieve on him. And I got him beefed up because that's a 14 pound reel and we're running 15 pound test on him. <clears throat> and now I'm taking two bottom snipers, both the same. But you, you need something like this to yank these big lake trout. You, you get a uni on here, these are big fish. They're, they're big fish and they fight like hell. And the problem is when you try to fight a multiple, multiple fish, because I fish with barbless hook. Remember, I'm frumpy buckle. I don't, I don't, I don't fish with them. So it's, it's tough if you're trying to fight three at a time, because they don't last long on that rod stand when you put them down. So you're constantly working uh, to keep them from spitting the hook, because you'll lose a lot of fish, a lot of fish out here. So anyway, we're going to take the bottom sniper 10 times. He's a 33 pounder with a mega tank 6,000 on there, 32 pounder. Now here, <clears throat> big enough gear, everything. I'm only running 30 pounds. 30 pound line on him. Uh, next up, this is the guy we're going to complete probably the first mission with. You know how I like to do things. I'll just, I'll show you where to go fish. We're going to fish this whole lake. I'll show you how to read the water and you guys can go catch your fish where you want. I'll show you where I catch them. But we're going to use this, the Phoenix 1210. It's a 19 and a half pounder and I, I love this reel. This is one of the greatest reels in the game. If you can put this on anything, you got to love it. It's a Big River 6500. 
<clears throat> and remember now that that, that 6500 at the end of her or the 3500s or the 2500s that basically tells you how much line you can put that's the size of that spool how much line you can put on there because you don't want to be up here these these guys will spool you fast this lake is so deep it's it's 200 it's 180 feet deep in some spot so they can go straight down and run you 180 feet out i mean that fast i've been spooled on that all around <laughs> i got spooled and broke off while i was there that's why i say it's it, it, these are big fish so and, and you look at the re retrieve the recovery level Nine, 49 inches with one crank. You, this is a great setup here. If you, if you can put this setup together, you will love this rod and this reel. And of course, he's 19 pounder <clears throat> and we're running 20 pound on him. We got him beefed up a little bit. In this number six position here, we got, we're gonna bring our big Ollie. He, he's big enough to, I mean, it takes a while to bring him in with this guy, but we're running him like we always do. And he, he, he runs 19 pound. Uh, and I'm running him on an 18, so he's beefed up a little bit too. And then the Arctic's 13 2 with a double punch, 24 pounder, and I'm running 25 pounds. So every, everything's kind of beefed up a little bit, and these are very big fish. So now you got to get a license. It's going to over, I think it's $4,000 for the license, and it's going to cost us $7,800 to get over there. So you guys get all that. I think, and what we're going to talk about while we're over there <clears throat> in today's video is the, you know, like we talk about everything, we're off the point of reading lakes anymore you guys are probably pretty good at that now is the senses of fish we're going to talk about three of the main senses of fish that every angler should know about and that is going to be sight hearing and smell and while we're fishing we'll talk about that and we'll learn how these sneaky little critters go so get yourself a license and um i'll meet you over there we're going to white moose lake alberta Canada. Okay, guys, we're here on the lake. I wanted to, before I jump down in there, I want to show you, you know, we always go talk about, well, let's read a lake and see where the, you know, what does the lake provide for the fish? You know, we talk about all the time, the, the ways of finding fish, location, eyesight, reading the water. So we read the water here. Now, I've been on this, there's not much on this lake at all. You've got a couple of fallen trees over here in the corner, and you've got a fallen tree over here on this side lake and other than that it's just it drops off very deep everywhere and that's their cover is the depths and this is very cold it's always snowing 21 degrees and we got sunshine today that's not always a good sign <laughs> but <clears throat> we'll be all right but there's actually ice on this lake along the edges over here and we'll see that but we're gonna we're gonna start off we're gonna catch most everything in the first mission right along this rock wall over here off of the dock, except for the northern pike. We're gonna come over here to this position and we're gonna cast out into here, in this area, and we'll catch the northern pike from here. Now there's a lot of brook trout over here. Um, your Atlantic salmon is tough. The Atlantic salmon roam down on the farther end of the lake here. I'm gonna grab them. Now the lake whitefish, very, that's a tough guy to get. I've never got him from the shore at all. The only time I've ever got this fish is you have to get on this side of the lake you got to use a boat and we'll we'll get him anyway so let's jump down in there let's go fish it now for those of you that have never been on this lake before this is beautiful i like to fish here it is quiet no yakking birds bothering the shit out of you. Like the Everglades. <laughs> All right. So, as you can see, I got some markers out there. I've, I've been, I've fished this lake a lot, and it's, it is just so deep everywhere. We're gonna, we're gonna pretty much catch everything right off this bank over here. So, let's, let me grab my, my Phoenix shirt with the red worms on. Now. The yellow perch is a little further down over here by this rock. So we'll, we'll throw out there. It, it shouldn't take too long. I'm about 31 inches down uh, with the leader. So let's talk about this, the sense of sight with fish. You know, <clears throat> in a lot of older mag 
books if you read I, I read a lot on fishing a lot of the older ones <laughs> they tell you in there that fish are colorblind and they only see lures and shades of gray well that's been proven to not exactly be true I mean if you look at the retinal structure of a fish's eye it's pretty similar to the humans and uh, knowledgeable fishermen will know that uh, you don't you don't wear bright colors you wear darks tans greens grays things of that nature uh, when you're fishing keep keep low silhouettes you don't want bright colors which I thought was kind of odd because if you look at the the waistcoats that we have in this game they're all dull colored all the way up through the levels like they should be grays tans and then as you get up a little higher you get some blues in there but you if you get the, to the highest one it's bright orange now I'm never gonna hit no fishing lake in like bright orange but that's the one who hope the, that's the color of the one that holds the most tackles so I guess you're forced to deal with it it's pretty quiet here hmm And re uh -oh, there we go. And the reason that happens is the way light refracts in water, it, it allows fish to see you. That's why it's better. It's always better to be wade if you're trout fishing in a stream. It's always better to be wading than it is to be up on the bank because your your silhouette sticks up out of the water. Fish can see you. You spook them. You got to sneak up on them. I love these guys that come crashing through the woods, stomping up through the. It's like, catching anything? Not lately. <laughs> oh, God. But what are you going to do? That's who they are. Come on, fish. What the hell here? I ain't got all day to just talk. So that brings us down to the, the next question of everybody. The, Everybody always talks about what is going on here. Lure color. Let's talk about that. So much out on that. What color is good for what water, for this, for that. There's a couple of rules of thumb. Hmm. We're not getting anything on the red worms. Well, I think what we might do here, because we are on low peak. Let's take a look at where's my leader at? 33. Let's get on 36, 39. It's deep. I don't know why I had it set at 33. So we'll talk about colors a little bit. <clears throat> colors of the rainbow. Think about the red end. The red end of the rainbow. <clears throat> now that has colors that are long wave length. They're low reflectance at the reds. So the colors disappear more quickly in deep water. Hence, <clears throat> if you notice, on a lot of my deep gear, my high, my bigger gear, my end game stuff, I always run red braid, red red braid on it, because red it disappears in deep water. It's harder to harder to see. Huh. 
I don't know there, guys. Finally a ding, huh? Come on. Hmm. Yeah, so <clears throat> red disappears, red, your reds and oranges on that end of the rainbow. I mean, you can see them up on the surface real well, but when you fish them deep, the deeper you get them, because water has a poor, <clears throat> for light. It's poor conductor. Light doesn't travel too far, too deep. All right, looks like I'm going to have to, I thought we could just snag a couple of these up really quick. See what happens here. There it goes. <clears throat> oh, look at that monster. We got ourselves our light tub. Let's get him. Let me get my notes out here. Where, where's my fiskies at? Fisk, the lake tub. We can mark him off the list. All righty. Lake tub with a red worm. All right. Well, I'll we'll just move in a little bit closer here. That must, <clears throat> I was fishing a little too shallow. I moved her down to about 40 inches. Snag went up right away there. All right. Let's grab this one. That's number two. <clears throat> that ain't no lake tub. <laughs> there we got it. Oh, there's our white sucker. Get him off the list. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, keep him. We need that yellow perch. He, he should have been over there, but I am wrong. We're going to go back there and try it again. Grab that yellow perch right over there. There we go. Listen to the cricket sing. Thank you. I got tired of trying to get that damn yellow perch. And them chubs are eating all my worms up. So I figured, well, might as well grab this guy. I always catch him right here in the front of the dock. And so we can mark him off the list. All right, we need the yellow perch with burbot. And the northern piker is in a different spot. So I'm going to go back now. And attempt to get the yellow perch. All right, we'll see you in a bit. Well, this is the only thing that's actually beats the fish that's bit. And there's our burbot on a red worm. Unbelievable. Okay. Well, we'll cross him off the list. We needed him. That still ain't my damn yellow perch, though. Damn it. All right. Going back in there for my yellow perch. Well, live bait wasn't working very well, so I went to a spinner bait. There's our Brooks route, but he's not part of this here school session. So, I'm going to see if I can pull that. Get a perch out of here with a with a spinning bait. So we're gonna hit this a couple times, see what uh, see what we can bring up. We'll see how that goes. I'm gonna just fish this for a couple of couple of draws. 
see what we get. And we have it. Our trophy yellow perch. We got on a spinner bait. Hey, just we're not biting on red worms. I couldn't get that some bitch to hit on them red worms for nothing. And, and any other time I'm here, those yellow perch are tearing up when I'm trying to fish for other pan fish. And I can't, you know, they're being a pain in the ass. But we got them. So we can move on. We got the yellow perch all the way. That's all the only thing we got left on this mission is the um, yellow perch. I mean, the uh, northern pike. So what we're going to do is same rod here. I'm just going to change bait up here real fast to a half ounce. We'll put a quarter ounce on this one. We'll do, we'll do the quarter ounce. All right, and we are going to never run with sharp objects in your hand, Tom. All right, I'm just going to take a short, short stroll up here. We could have just done the easy way out and spawned, <clears throat> spawned over here, but I'm old and I need the exercise, so I decided to walk. All right, we're gonna catch ourselves. We're gonna catch ourselves a northern pike right over here. Just throw. Like I said before, this is the only fallen tree in the lake, and the one right over there in front. Other than that, it's clean, so there's not a lot of brush or anything for these guys to hide in. Um, that's just the way it is on this lake. It's the depth. I mean, it's a very, very deep waterway. All right, so let's see if we can snatch us up a northern pike here real quick. We're still in a little bit of the peak. We haven't missed our peak, hopefully. And to continue our discussion, there he is, hopefully. Uh, on the other end of the spectrum, when you get up into the blues and that, they have a short wa wavelength that reflects more in, in, in the rainbow when we're talking about colors of blurs. And, and so they can be seen deeper because they reflect light better in the blue. So when you have sunny days, you want to use silver, something that the sun can imitate bait fish. There he is. And we have it. Northern Pike. Mission complete. Exploration. <clears throat> White moose. Watch. Oh, that's a nice that's a nice fish though, isn't it? Not a bad fish. They're tough to eat though, a lot of bones. Alright, we'll keep that. Well that ends us here for there. We talked about uh, fish sight. In the colors and so a rule of thumb here guys is basically and i have it written down here so i wouldn't mess this up because this is how it normally works is that you use dull colored lures and flies anything under um above 50 degrees in warm weather so if you're going to cold water then you use your colors more more of your brighter and now the red and white daredevil that we're using right here there's a reason that that's red and white it's on both opposite spectrums this makes this a universal lure it's that's why it's such a great lure because in some conditions you see the red other conditions you see the white so there's always something on that lure that gets seen no matter what it is it's red and the white so the red goes away in deep but the white shows up you, you know, as you drag it up so anything in a red and white that's why if you look at all the old poppers and jigs and things like that they were always red and white because it was the two colors on different spec ends of the spectrum and it works so that being said i want to thank you for fishing with uncle buck um if you enjoyed anything out of here we're going to continue the second one the, the trout mission we're not going we're going to start off right just down the planks here a little bit 
start that one off and uh, we'll get the rest of these missions done where we got next it's called white moose trial we're going after the lake whitefish the brook trout which we've already caught lake trout splake and the Atlantic salmon so <clears throat> I want to thank you and we'll see you next time remember never ever give up the fight